The van build you're gonna see now is what we would call here in Cornwall, a proper job. All right, so I have finished framing up the kitchen now. Uh, as you can see, we've got our sink uh, sitting nicely in position. So that'll get installed later. Um, because of the amount of room, I've ended up changing how it was originally gonna get stuck into position. Usually these guys have some clamps underneath, uh, but I really just don't have that much room here or in front in order to pull that off. So, um, instead what I've done is I have recessed a channel all the way around in some plywood and that allows this to sit flush with the top of this plywood. So this is an undermounted sink and uh, our bench top will come in and sit over the edge. We actually have a little piece that we can choke on here. So this is what our countertop is going to be, some maple that'll end up finishing somewhere like that and looking pretty groovy. Now we end up drinking a ton of almond milk, so no doubt that'll be a good space to store like 10 gardens. Amazing. Also we had some space above, so I've built another spot where we'll be able to put what looks to be a good place for a cutlery drawer. Uh, on the other side. As I've shown before, maybe haven't finished, we have where the fridge is gonna go. So that's gonna be in this one. The stove is gonna go here and that allows us some space underneath. So when that installs, we'll know what we can do under here as far as how many drawers. And then this is our final base. So we'll put a little piece at the bottom of fly just to close that off to make sure nothing uh, hides its way down in the old wheel well. And we can divvy that up as we like. So we may have a couple of drawers and a bin in there. Um, so all in all, that's gonna give us a really nice kitchen. Uh, and now we can make a start on the bed. So still working on the bed today, so Made some progress, Callan's now sorting out where the water pump's gonna go in relation to our water tank. Uh, while he does that, I'm working on the ceiling today, so uh, we have a lot of screw holes along the uh, ceiling, so I'm filling in all of those with putty, uh, sanding them down, getting them ready to paint. So uh, that's today's project. Hello. <laughs> What'd you do today, Callan? Welcome to Fantasy Island. Uh, <laughs> today I have put together um, a bit more of the bed and as I'm working from biggest to smallest in the way of plywood, uh, I've been putting in a whole bunch of my offcuts in certain places. So here I have a floor now which covers the hole created by the step at the bottom of this cupboard. I have, it's exciting. Ooh, there it is. I have a, uh, a bench which is now ready to support the stove top. We then move to the back and I've been putting together the, uh, the bottom, or well, the back end of the van, so the bed. So we have here where our water tank is going. We'll be covering up um, the wheel well and then the pipes and our pump will get hidden in there. I have been uh, setting up the area where we will have our batteries. So just here at the moment I have a couple of picture frames that I've screwed down and the purpose of these is to hold these batteries so that they cannot possibly move whilst we uh, drive around. Alright so this is our bed frame. Uh, it probably seems a little bit more complicated than what it actually is, so I thought I'd just kind of break it down, show you the nice and easy parts of it. So, our first box essentially was just as big as what we needed to get 
our tank in. Once our tank was in and we pushed it against the far wall, I was able to have a piece of plywood run the full length down into the back of our kitchen. Uh, this box here is on the edge of our wheel well, so that's what divided this. I actually have a bit of spare space as far as the tank goes, so at the moment we have the ability to move this, which is great. When we stick our pump here, we'll be able to fire some uh, hoses through and connect in, and then once we know exactly where that's going to sit, we can then put a block in there that will keep everything from shuffling around while we drive. So we can hit that before uh, we screw everything off. So moving over to here, I basically just put a wall up against and on top of the wheel well. So that covered it, giving us as much space as possible. Now in this little cavity here, which I will eventually drill a hole to fire this wire down, this is where our pump will sit. Now I had to make this out of two levels uh, in order to make sure that I had enough room for the pump. The pump is actually just a little bit taller than what our wheel well was going to give us in the top height of our bed, but we made it work, so that's cool. Um, and width-wise, I could have taken more space that way, but I decided just to take a little bit of a check out. This allows the pump just to kind of slot in before we uh, we move on and I will do that once I get all the plumbing. So the plumbing is going to come after this. So pipe here into our tank that'll feed some pipes off that run into our kitchen and here being our hot water heater sink and then shower. 450 is the distance between the outside wall and this front part so that's going to be the width of our seats. This opening here is 600, it's a nice area to walk, but most likely you won't be walking. That'll be where our table goes. Over here is about 650 at the moment. Now we're taking 450 to make this side even to this side. The remainder I will build above and that's what's going to contain our squishy panel with the fold down table and our shelves at the back there where all this wiring is going to. So the inverter will sit here and again positioning uh, we'll deal to a bit later on but comfortably it sits on here um, but underneath this top level of ply. That leaves the remainder of this box for whatever storage we want. So I think that's going to be where backpacks go. So 214 pounds, I believe we have about 200 and 40 pounds worth of water when that's full. So when that's full and sitting there on the opposite side we should be relatively balanced. This will be our outside drawer. So we have our tank. We will have access to three, three points from the outside. Easy enough to fill and whatever we have to do to run off that we will sort out. It will be easy and accessed mostly from the back. This will be a drawer, so I can cut uh, a drawer to have a slightly out of square shape and still use most of that and that will come in and out, that will be amazing. Uh, this back area is just going to be for a few knickknacks, I thought that would be nice. Now things that I've kept in mind here are, I'm going to cover but I don't like the look of uh, these light panels and this last panel of steel. So what we're going to do is I've just made sure that I have enough space to get in here and remove this light so in case any of these light bulbs go these are changeable. So the next step for us on this bed is for me to build up. Now I've cut this piece, slide in. that guy goes there, that will be screwed off solidly and from there up is the space that I have to build. That then leaves this space as 450 which matches the other side. So we're going to build our hidden table, fold down table there and a squishy panel. It's also going to be where we stick all of the bedding. 
And then here where all this chaos wire is, is gonna be a set of shelves that go up. So that's gonna be a great set of cubbies. Okay, so uh, today I am uh, working out the lifting panels of the bed. Um, we have a inverter on one side and a pump on the other, and both of them only have a small amount of space that they can fit. So because of that, I've had to make a couple of pieces uh, interchangeable and removable just in case something goes wrong and you have to access them in the future. So on this side, we have a perimeter going around the outside of the lifting panel. This is because we will have uh, squishy panels here to sit against or cushions. Uh, and this side uh, will probably remain solid, but we do have stuff in the way like our, um, our sockets. So because of that, we've kept the lifting panel out from the wall uh, and out from the back wall. All edges of the ply have somewhere where they can sit so that they're all supported. This piece here is removable. So in the future, if you came in and you needed to take this pump out, which at the moment you can't uh, because of the size of this timber, uh, this piece is removable with a bunch of screws. This piece is also removable. This will be the bottom of our uh, squishy panel bedding hideaway section. Over in the far corner is gonna be these shelves. So this piece is likely not gonna move. When I then have the last little funky thing underneath, as this piece is not gonna move, I still wanted to be able to access um, this if there was ever a problem. So what we've built here is a couple of bits of timber that just have a little check out either side. Um, and that allows me to take this out again if there was any problems or I needed to replace it. And that can just slide back in. Um, so that's not going to go anywhere while we drive. This piece screws in and locks down at the front. So at this point, with this installed, if you ever needed to take the inverter out, you just need to unscrew this piece with these screws here, take off that front edge, and that should pull straight out. Yes, I have finally completed the beds. So we have our two side opening cabinets. If I uh, sit down on the passenger side, these guys open up. They'll be a bit easier when we chuck some uh, handles on them. Back panel stays fixed. And the opposite side, this is the passenger side. Again, lifts up, has a really nice spot underneath. All right, so I have a look at some of these holes in the ceiling. So we're just getting them filled with putty, sanding them down, I'll hit them with another round just to make it a really flat surface up above. I'm trying to put in these cabinets. Uh, these guys were actually a bunch of fun. Um, I say a little bit sarcastically. The uh, scribing of all the backs of these panels ended up being uh, slightly difficult, but in the end worked out well. Um, and it was just a case of making sure that everything lined up in the van. So uh, we have these on both sides of me now. These are our upper cabinets. Uh, there's a slight difference in size as we go for this one that is above our bed. And this is because as we've got an off center bed in the van, we had some more room. Uh, and that'll be good for storing all of our clothes and stuff. And it's gonna hide our uh, control panel area. So uh, my next job here, I have a whole bunch of knotty pine. This is really thin stuff. And the purpose of that is to line the backs of these uh, cabinets. As they're still pretty raw, uh, I want them to look nice and I mean I could cover them with ply again but ply is heavier um, and it just doesn't look as nice whereas I could do I think a better job with some pine so that's going to come up here and along and basically match the ceiling. All right so what I'm after doing here is um, just checking my plumbing fittings and making sure that uh, everything that I've got is uh, able to talk to one another and I have the right pieces. 
So it's really important that we have the plumbing behind the shower really, really solid um, as we're going to close that up in a way that you won't be able to access it again. Um, and that's because it's going to have tiles. So essentially it needs to be really kind of well tested, waterproof, everything works really, really well. And then we can go ahead and close that up. So at this point I have uh, behind me our faucet and our pump. Um, I also have, I think, the shower. Um, so what I'm going to do is just check that all of my fittings uh, match up with everything that I have. And if that's all good to go, I can start positioning all the fittings. Once all the fittings are where they need to be, I can then start basically joining them all together with the pipe work. Okay, so this is kind of important to see. In the back of the, um, the shower taps, we have got this three quarter inch pipe. But three quarter inch pipe means that the fittings are usually gonna be an inch. So unfortunately, this piece, when it finally comes out, will not match these three quarter inch elbows as they are the same size. So I'm gonna need to get a one inch drop down elbow. So we'll get those later on the way home. Um, basically a good reason why we test stuff out. There will be a, uh, a drop elbow that will be on the wall. Um, well, the back of the wall, some framing hidden behind the wall. Then we're gonna have plywood, then framing, then our, um, our waterproof tile uh, underlay board. Uh, we still haven't picked that up yet, as it's just kind of getting sent. Um, this is gonna connect in and stick out the wall. And it's gonna be like that until um, the tile gets put on and finished. And at that point, we can then go ahead and install this. So there's gonna be a bit of time in between all that. So that's why I bought these three quarter inch caps. All right, so uh, this ball valve is gonna go um, basically underneath the sink so it's accessible um, even when we cover over the shower with tile. Um, this guy will go basically on this side closer to us than um, the, the shower cavity. Um, so that's gonna be good and then it just allows us to uh, either open or close Actually, that's open, that's closed, excuse me. Uh, and that means if there was ever a problem or a leak, we can just shut that off, still use the rest of the water until we get it fixed. If you can see in there at the moment, um, we have our hot and our cold um, inlet uh, points and outlet points for our hot water heater. Um, so I'm just gonna put these guys on get them ready to go for the plumbing. All right, so this one here is called a straight stop valve. As you can see, it's got a ball valve inside that turns on and off. Now the purpose of this one is to fix into the plumbing below and then the faucet hoses and poke into the top there and they screw on. So these guys, they come with their own lock and nut, but if we were to take the faucet ones, these guys will lock on here too. Um, so that allows me to run my plumbing just up the back walls of the sink, leave them there. These get clamped in position, and then when I'm ready, when the sink's installed, I can then drop the faucet down and screw these in from the top. And that again allows me to turn these on and off if ever there was a problem. All right, so I have most of my plumbing done here at the moment. Uh, this is our tank. This guy is a 32 gallon tank, just behind our left uh, wheel well. Uh, so, we have our vent uh, inlet, that's how water is going to go in, and this is going to connect to a remote fill door that will get put on here um, as soon as that turns up in the mail. Down here we have our outlet, so this is basically our cold water coming in. That fires its way through above the tank there and towards our pump. So, currently I was one fitting short. We'll, uh, 
fit that in today. Now this is a silencer kit, it's basically a um, pressure resistance flexible tubing that allows this guy to wiggle and shake as it moves and not rattle and cause vibration in amongst the solid PEX piping. So water comes out of our tank, gets pulled out by our pump. This is a strainer, removable, gets rid of any uh, dust or debris that somehow makes its way up through there. And this guy then finds its way along. And underneath, and I decided to pull it around and inside um, this box because it just would have been so difficult to put all of these joins and connections down in there. There was just not enough space. So anyway, this comes out and the water then feeds into our uh, on-demand water heater. So the cold continues in and then keeps going. The hot now starts and then that goes on its way out. So that goes through its cabinetry, connects into underneath the sink. Now a kind of last minute purchase I got was an accumulator and because of that I have another silencer kit but that's just in the mail as well. So that will connect to these two points and keep the cold water running. Uh, so the hot water is now coming out as well. Either side of the faucet, which I don't have sitting in, uh, and the reason I have them either side is because there's a weight that free hangs here, so I wanted to give it some space. We have these valves, and these valves have a different connection point for the faucet each, and also they have the ability to turn on and off should there be any trouble. So then the hot and cold connects on. I have another couple of valves that I can uh, stop the water if I want, and these guys lead into the shower. Now the reason I've given them valves as well is because the shower is essentially um, hidden from me by the tiles. Once we put that all in. So moving over we then have the hot and cold which lead up to our connection points for the shower faucet. So our plumbing really though it has a bunch of bits that all connect together is really very simple. Just one side of the van and pretty much in a straight line. Um, and just while we're in the shower, that's our power for our vent and our vent pipe. That would be great for the nature's head toilet that we'll put in.